Freaking Daniel Green thinks he's so cool using his fantasy knife as a microphone holder. Freaking chew on this, my dude. I got myself a Virgil's root beer because I want to sit here and I want to have a book discussion about the Poppy War. I mentioned in my last month's wrap up that I had some problems with the Poppy War. I felt very conflicted about it. I want to use this space to try to talk about it. If you're very, very, very sensitive to spoilers, this may not work for you, but I'm going to try to give some general descriptions of everything in the like spoilery freest way possible, at least. We'll see what happens later on. So the Poppy War by R.F. Kuang is a recent fantasy series. The third book is coming out in November, and I've seen almost exclusively universal praise for it on booktube though on goodreads i think it averages somewhere in the high threes maybe three and a half and going into this book i knew a couple things i knew that the author was trying to use her story to try to share some of the lesser known history of china i know that she was inspired to write this asian inspired asian themed fantasy using that history as a medium and i have been told by everyone that this book is just grim dark and brutal at the same time while you're hearing that it's grim dark and brutal you will hear that the writing is extremely ya though a lot of people don't necessarily dive into what that means i'm going to try to encapsulate my feeling on all of those points let's start at the beginning the story starts and the main character rin is being forced into an arranged marriage she decides that she's going to study her butt off and take this test that's going to allow her to test into the military academy so she's able to leave home and forget her past not have to marry this crazy dude and she'll be in the military she'll be able to fight against the monsters that have oppressed their country for years by monsters i mean people like bad mean people and so the first chapter of this book is just her basically studying her butt off and she's going against people that have studied their entire life for this test. She's had essentially no real schooling. She's just been, been a lackey in her step parents drug running operation. And her teacher tells her that it's extremely unlikely that she'll be able to get in. But throughout the first chapter, we see her study her butt off, start being really unhealthy. She's super determined. She super knows what she wants and she goes for it all the way. And at the end of the first chapter, she goes to check the scores for the leaderboard of everyone that took this test, and she got the highest scores of everyone in her area. She'd be everybody that studied forever. From there, she goes to the military academy. And I think the military academy and this first chapter, this is the first part of a three-part book. I think this is why a lot of people say that it feels YA. First of all, Kwong's prose is extremely straightforward. This is coming from someone that reads Brandon Sanderson, and I think another reason that it may feel more YA is that her characters speak in like a modern style. It feels like it's about teens today. It doesn't like she's not writing it in an older style. And even when they use profanity, they're using modern English profanity for the most part. There's a couple of like in-world profanities. And that based with the two different school settings, as well as there actually being like a rival in the school that's like the school bully, like all of this feels in writing and tone and language and setting like a YA book. Throughout the entire process of this schooling, we are told how much Rin works. We are told how hard she has to work. And I guess like super light spoilers, she gets in trouble with the martial arts teacher and she gets kicked out of martial arts class. Unfortunately, since they're at a military academy, that's essentially a failure. But what does Rin do? She is super resourceful, super determined. So we're told that she works her butt off, finds another way around the system, and she wins the martial arts tournament without ever having trained with the martial arts master. That's the end of section one, the school setting. Now Rin is a teenager in this setting. She's in a school. As I've explained, those are the reasons that people think this feels YA. But sometimes I think using the term YA is more of a derogatory term than it needs to be, I want to be more specific about some major problems with this first section. We are told that Rin is a super interesting and driven character. We see how she molds her life around the things that she wants, and she's even willing to go to super unhealthy and desperate measures to get there. We are told a lot of things about the school, and the history of the school, and the history of the wars. I don't know if you've noticed that I keep saying the word told, and that's because I feel like the major problem with this entire book, starting with section one, is that we are told everything and very rarely do we feel like we're being shown most of it. In the first chapter, we are told Ren studies her butt off and it's super hard, but it's all in one chapter. It feels extremely rushed. 
I don't feel like we connect with Ren there. We see her character qualities a little bit, but we never connect with the character. When we go to the military school, we're told a lot of hardships there. We're told about certain relationships that clash and we are given like two or three instances where these characters clash and the rest has to be inferred because I feel like Kwong does a very bad job about actually writing us into the characters in a way that we fully understand and we realize them in a way that we feel it. We just know it in our heads because she says it. And because we don't actually feel these things, we're just told them over and over, it seems to me a little extreme unlikely sort of young adult protagonist coming into their own chosen one role when Rin is able to score at the top of her school in two different instances when every odd is stacked against her. These types of beating the odds exist in all sorts of stories, but I don't think most of them are adult fantasy, which is why some people going into this book are really off put by a lot of this first section. While there is a lot of people that are more into young adult books and young adult storytelling tropes that absolutely love this school section. They get really into it and they're looking forward to seeing more of the school section. The problem is the book changes in part two. I'm trying to be as vague as possible. In part two, we are introduced to a completely new set of characters that Ren has to interact with. She's in a completely new environment. And I know that I just used this example when I was talking about Breaking Dawn, but I'm gonna do it again. This is an X-Men story. Only this one is another example of me not feeling like I'm connecting with anyone because I'm told so much about the history of this war and the ways that these people are being oppressed. And we see a couple examples of these people in scenarios where we're told what their character traits are and what their powers are. And once again, I don't feel like I'm ever connecting with anything. And also at this point, the tone has gone from like YA school setting to like X-Men cartoons. Yes, we are told how oppressive everything is supposed to be, but characters are making jokes and we really aren't privy to that much violence from a first person perspective. Like I said, we are told things, but we don't live them in the book. Eventually we do see a fight and the violence is graphic and it's kind of the first time that we've had to do that. But everything about the story is so disjointed from part one to part two, from the history to what's going on. And the more we learn about the magic system, the more I would totally believe if you told me it was from Avatar The Last Airbender and not a grim, dark, Asian-inspired adult fantasy book. No, I've never seen Avatar The Last Airbender, but the magic system from this feels like something I would hear about in that series, which is a kid's cartoon. I will state this. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm super confused at this point when I'm reading the book and everyone is telling me that it's grimdark. Yes, I've been told how bad everything is, but from what we actually partake in, short of adult swearing and a couple violent scenes, everything is silly and goofy. It really comes across that way. And I'm not trying to be hyperbolic. Throughout these two sections, there's fart jokes and poop jokes and just like all sorts of juvenility. I feel like we're supposed to feel like these are people that are children that are having to do horrible crimes and we're being told that and we are supposed to feel that, but I never do because I never feel like we connect with anyone. Also, during this section, Rin completely changes her character from being super driven and knowing exactly what she wants to uh, being all over the place, kind of whiny. She literally never respects anything that anyone above her tells her to do. And the only time she's reprimanded, she acts like she was wronged. I've even seen reader reviews talk about how she was abused when she has done nothing but backtalk her commander and disobey orders and he slaps her in the face. You should have done it the first time she disobeyed orders. Like you have to maintain this regimen, but it's, it's, it feels like a kid's cartoon. People that may push back against what I'm saying may try to use the argument that there is a lot of drug related issues talked about here, but they almost feel like a backdrop. And once again, we are told many times of the problems that drugs have. When real life, we know the negative side effects of drugs, but the story just <laughs> doesn't. The story tells us a lot of things are gonna be bad and then things happen and it isn't bad. So Rin has changed as a character. She's not consistent and what we thought we knew about her isn't true. I understand that she's in a different situation, but it just doesn't feel right. We're never connecting with anyone. Everything is super disjointed and I'm still thinking this is supposed to be a grimdark fantasy. I was extremely confused. And then I hit the part three around the 75% or 80% mark of the book 
There is a town that is brutally destroyed and everyone is massacred. And that chapter, or maybe two chapters, is like the most violent, brutal, everything, every trigger warning I've ever seen in two chapters. All sorts of graphic extreme violence is described in detail for these two chapters. And it is extremely brutal like I, I've said it's the it's like the most graphic thing I've ever read and then the rest of the book we never see any more of that so when people are talking about this book being grim dark what they're saying is you're being told everything is super bleak there is an extremely violent one chapter and everything else is just told to you to be bad the section before that brutal moment and the section after that brutal moment are just fully entirely tied into this magic system but the more we deal with the magic system the more it feels like a little bit I don't want to say that it's childish because it revolves around the usage of strong drugs, but the entire magic system and mythology system and the characters that we meet, it really, it feel, I don't know how to describe it except to say that it, it feels really immature and it doesn't feel like the stakes are that high because the power scale shifts randomly all over the place. Oh my word, the end of this book, the power scale just explodes to like the nth degree to the point where I feel like it breaks its own logical consistency. I, I don't know. Now you may be thinking, why did I say I was mixed on this? I've just been negative about this the whole time. First of all, I like seeing a fantasy based in a different setting. I loved Rage of Dragons for that exact same reason. Unfortunately, this book at the beginning has a lot of similarities to Rage of Dragons, but Rage of Dragons was amazing and this one I struggled to connect with. Nevertheless, if I didn't go into this book braced for it to be this extremely brutal, adult, grim, dark story, I think I would have been better off because I would have known to expect it to be way more silly and juvenile than it was. I'm telling you, if you literally took this one chapter and toned down the descriptions of the ruined city that they find, this book, I don't want to say that it's not an adult book, because I think a lot of people think that's degrading. I don't mean that to be degrading. I love YA series, but it definitely wouldn't be considered grimdark. With the exception of the strong language in the story, it could have been something adult compared to like a Brandon Sanderson, a real PG-13 style thing. And I think if the character Characters were more fleshed out in a way that you really felt like you were seeing the world through their eyes at all points. I think the tone of the story, the silliness of the tone, could have been more cohesive, and I think that would have made it a better book overall. Additionally, to explaining the like fantasized version of this real life conflict down to this otherwise a little bit light not light-hearted. If the juxtaposition between Kwong being a historian and writing a story about characters that like to laugh and have fun together while doing army tasks, if that would have blended better, or if we just focused more on one or the other, I think it would have been way more enjoyable. That being said, like, I am a little bit conflicted. When we were at the school, there's a lot of goofiness related to some interactions between the main character Ren and her school master. That sets up the book for a tone of goofiness that could have continued into the tone of goofiness in part two and you could have had it still be serious but like there's all kinds of books that have silliness and darkness but the blend just never meshed and I think that's because we never fully connect with the character and the characters change and we're only told why we don't feel like it's earned. If I would have been expecting something different and the poppy war minus that one brutal scene could have been made into a like a children's tv show the problem is i think kwong wanted to make something brutal and hard-hitting but what she actually wrote is just not that I enjoyed the historical telling of these things. I enjoyed the politics of what was going on. And on a different level, if I would have had it in a different book or a book where it would have melded it differently, I liked the ideas that she was going for in the story. And I even sort of like the idea for the concept of the magic system. I kind of like some of the things that I think she was trying to say about the magic system and and theology and philosophy and it's possible that in book two there's a lot of the problems that i have with the way the magic system was handled maybe that's explained better and maybe the tone is entirely different with book two but with book one i felt like i it, i don't i I have so many problems with it, and I like the concepts, but I, I don't like the execution. At the same time, I was curious to see what happened. I read this book 
quite fast, partially because the prose is extremely easy to get through, and partially because I was genuinely curious what was going to happen. I, I did care about the world. Like I said, understanding the history of this place, when Kwong was telling the history that she wanted to tell and using the inspiration that she wanted to be inspired from, I thought all of that stuff was interesting. It's unfortunately the rest of the things that took place in that backdrop that I really struggled with, but I still read the book very fast because I was curious. When I finished the book, I was like, well... That was, that was okay. It happened. I, I, I guess I don't fully understand what the consequences are going to be, but I also didn't have that drive to pick up book two right away. I started a different book instead. I know that I'm being more negative than positive, but I, I, it's just the truth of what hap You know, I mentioned recently, if I read a book and I don't love it, I'm going to be honest. This is the honesty of, of what I felt. I never connected with any of the characters. The plot was interesting, but the part of the plot that I thought was interesting was just Kwong doing a remix of historical events. Any of the stuff that I felt like she added to the story I felt fell flat. If you want to see someone who has a different opinion of this, lots of my booktube friends have done positive reviews, but I wanted to recommend and link down below a review by Kayla from Books with Kayla. She really, really loved this book. She really wanted to get to the second one. I'm not 100% sure how she felt about the second one, but I know that she loved this first one. I'm going to link her review down below. You should go watch that to get the reverse sort of opinion. Like I said, I didn't hate it, but I definitely didn't love it. I thought it was fine. Have you read this book? Do you think my criticisms are off base? Have you seen other people say the same things? I went to Goodreads, and if you read the three-star, two-star, and one-star reviews, you will see a lot of the criticisms that I said, as well as many, many others. If you liked the book, do you at least know where I'm coming from? Like, does what I'm saying make any sense, or am I just completely crazy? If you like this video, please remember to give it a like. If you'd like to see more book discussions or reviews or whatever from me, please remember to subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support me, there's a Patreon link down below. If you'd like to talk about books more with me or maybe ask me more questions more directly there's a discord down below that you can join for free if you did read this book i hope that you enjoyed it more than i did i'm not saying don't read it but i'm saying that if the things that i'm saying might bother you maybe you shouldn't read it please for me have a good rest of your week i love you all bye Always looking out tired, sleep. No one ever get enough if I don't show up. I might.